Yeah, that's nine one one. This is Carla. Where's your emergency? Um, hi, this is um off duty officer. Um, can I get I need emails. Um, uh, I'm in number. Do you need police as well or just EMS? Yes, I need both. Okay, what's the address? I'm at apartment number 1478. I'm in 1478. When I hear like what I would describe as two people meeting each other on a surprise, so you know the doors open and two people meet, and then I hear two gunshots go off. I what's miss, going on? I miss, I'm an off-duty officer. I thought I was in my apartment, and I shot a guy thinking that he was thinking it was my apartment. Before you heard the gunshots, did you hear any loud uh, voices, like verbal commands? No. Uh, did you hear anything like, get on the ground, Let, show me your hands? No. He you saw someone? Uh, yes, I thought it was my apartment. I'm f <laughs> Oh my god. I'm sorry. I just looked through the peephole. And when you looked out the peephole, what did you see? I saw uh, her on the phone. And she was just standing in front of the door of my neighbor across the way. And she was just on the phone, um, and she sounded upset. Oh my god, I'm done. I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to. I'm so sorry. This is Botham Shemjan. By all accounts, Bo was a wonderful, decent, kind man. On September the 6th of 2018, the evidence is going to show you that he was sitting in his living room in shorts and a t-shirt, watching TV, eating a bowl of vanilla ice cream. When all of a sudden, Amber Geiger comes through his front door, uninvited, as Bo is trying to get up off the couch to find out what this intruder is doing coming into his home, she is leveling off her gun, having acquired her target, and she shoots at him twice. No opportunity for de-escalation. No opportunity for him to surrender. Bang, bang. So you might be asking yourself, as did we, how does Amber Geiger come to be standing over to dine both and John, an unarmed man in his own apartment, having just shot him. We began to work right away, reconstructing her day on September the 6th. From 12 to 114, the defendant is at the central station for briefing. The CRT team was assisting the SWAT team with some, I believe, robbery suspects. The members of the CRT team, did that include the defendant, Yes, ma'am. There had been several robberies in the Southeast Division, and, and that, uh, that was their mission for the time. From approximately 1.22 to 2.07, the defendant is at a scene. She seemed to be alert and aware of what was going on around her that day. Uh, to my knowledge, yes. From 2.21 to 7.33 p.m., the defendant was at DPD headquarters. At 2.54, the defendant sends a Snapchat to her partner, Martin Rivera. You and Amber Geiger at some point crossed from just being professional partners, police partners, into an intimate relationship. Is that right? Yes. Would you send provocative photographs of yourself to Amber Geiger? Uh, yes. Would Amber Geiger send provocative photos of herself to you? Yes. At 9.17, the defendant arrives at the Southeast substation. At 9.26, the defendant docks her body cam at the Southeast station. At 9.27 and 9.28, we see Botham Sean arriving to Southside Flats on their digital video recorder. At 9.38.37, the defendant receives a phone call from her partner, Martin Rivera. You call her and you begin uh, what is a 16 minute and 44 second conversation here. Is that accurate, Mr. Rivera? Yes. And then does that conversation, after she's entered into the parking garage, continue then for another Seven, eight minutes? Yes. Was there anything about that telephone conversation that you could remember that was very demanding or, or required her to stop driving her vehicle so that she could converse with you? No. She parks on the wrong floor. She actually backs into a parking spot in the parking garage on the fourth floor.
from her vantage point where she is parked, all the way until she gets out of her truck, and all the way forward until she walks into a skyway that connects to the apartment complex itself, you can see the roof line of the apartment complex that you don't see from the third floor. It is a completely different perspective. She fails to recognize that. She has to go down two very long hallways now in order to get to what she thinks is her apartment. But in fact, she's walking towards Bo. She walks past 16 different apartments and fails to register the number four on any single one of them. Amber Geiger has no floor mat in front of her door. Amber Geiger has nothing but the concrete floor. In front of both of the apartments is this extremely obvious bright red floor mat. Did you see anything that was a little bit out of the ordinary to you? Uh, I noticed an officer, and I hadn't seen an officer on my floor. Uh, you go to your apartment, what do you do when you get to your apartment? Uh, just go in, and I think I was, I was about to cook me something to eat. Okay, what happened then? And then I heard gunshots. Unfortunately for Bo, it would seem that he didn't lock his door when he got home that night. One of two things happened. Either Amber Geiger immediately assumed that there was an intruder inside what she thought was her apartment, and she decided to go in and engage. Or number two, she completely failed to recognize the reality that she locked her door that morning. And like everything else, she just keeps on going on, missing all these clues. And she enters into Bo's apartment. Hey, bud. They're trying to get there to you, okay? I know. Stay with me, bud. I thought it was my apartment. I thought it was my apartment. Once she enters into Bo's apartment and she sees him, she departed from her training and her orders as a Dallas Police Department police officer. Have you had occasions ever to respond to a like an open door or a burglary in progress? Yes, sir. If you have not yet made entry, what do your general orders and your training tell you to do? Should you enter that building alone? No, sir. Should you take a position of cover and concealment? Yes, sir. Primarily for whose safety? Uh, myself and the person inside the apartment. And if you have, say you got there and there's an open door, and you've opened up the door or you've looked inside and then you come to realize there is somebody inside that particular location. And you have two choices. I want you to presume that you can safely tactically reposition to a position of cover and concealment or you can just shoot them dead and then figure it out later. What do you do? You cover and concealment. Is that because of the sanctity of human life? Yes, sir. At 9.59, a 911 call is placed by the defendant. At 10.02.25, the defendant texts Martin Rivera, I need you, hurry. At 10.03.03, the defendant texts Martin Rivera again and says, I f***ed up. Did you notice those texts coming in from Ms. Geiger at 10.02 and 10.03 p.m.? Yes. Did you later come to realize uh, that these text messages had been sent to you while she was on the phone with 911? Um, no, I didn't know that. At 10.04.39, we can see DPD Lee's body camera showing Officer Blair reaching the defendant outside of 1478. Yes, so Mr. Jean had a gunshot wound of the chest. The entrance wound was on the left side of the chest. It was right above the left nipple. As it entered the body, it went through the soft tissue and musculature of the left chest. It hit the anterior aspect of the left fifth rib. Can you hear me? 
at that point it hit the upper lobe of the left lung, it hit the heart, which we talked about that the hospital had sutured that defect. Um, it then went through the diaphragm, which is a, th a thin muscle layer that separates your uh, chest contents from your abdominal contents. It went through the diaphragm, it hit the stomach, it hit the intestine twice, and then it came to rest within uh, a muscle um, in the left abdominal cavity. You'll hear from Amber. Amber Geiger was an autopilot. I was scared as first as I was going to cry. She had no options but to use her gun. Amber Geiger firmly and reasonably believed that she was in her own apartment. Amber Geiger firmly and reasonably believed that she had confronted an intruder in her apartment. Amber Geiger firmly and reasonably believed that she had no choice but to use her gun. State your name for the record, please. Amber Renee Geiger. We're going to spend days dissecting what happened in seconds. You were on the phone with Mark Rivera when you drove in. Yes, sir. Tell the jury where you went in your truck. I went up to the third floor to park my truck. You now know you weren't on the third floor. Yes. But you believed you were. I believed I was. It's a confusing place. None of the numbers are clearly marked. You drive around by memory. You park by memory, you park by feel. When you get out of your car, you can take the time to look around and see, okay, is this the second floor, is this the third floor, but most people don't. Was that evil of her to do? Was it evil of her not to count the floors? She goes through the entryway, again, there's no number. She's going home. She's worked a long day. She's tired. She's almost home. She's walking the same way she's always walked. It looks the same. The doors are the same. The lights are the same. What you will see when you see pictures of this apartment complex is that there's not numbers on the door. There's not numbers right here. The numbers are in white lights that are up and to the left. There's nothing in her eyesight level that indicates what floor she's on. She would have to stop and look up to see. But everything looks the same. The hallways look the same. As you got out and started to go to your apartment, uh, can you uh, tell the jury what path you took? I went directly down that path, um, down the hallway. Do you remember how you entered that door? Did I just, it was, I didn't need a key. Something about the door of 1478 you need to know, and it is clear through the investigation. This metal portion of the door, it was defectively installed so it bows out. So when the temperature and the humidity are right, then the door doesn't always shut fully. It comes to a close, but it doesn't latch. So that when you push it, it opens. There's a type of slam that was built on the door where it is designed to close automatically, but you can manipulate it in a way where it doesn't quite latch. But you have to be very intentional about that, where it doesn't latch. And were you aware of uh, issues, any issues with the door of 1478? No, none. That's not Amber Geiger's fault. As you inserted the key, or started to insert the key into the lock, did you see anything wrong with the door? It was cracked open. Did you see anything else, or notice anything else uh, at that point in time? I heard moving around inside my apartment. As the door opened, uh, did you see a, uh, anything in your apartment? Yes, I did. That's when I heard directly in the middle towards the windows when I saw the silhouette figure standing back there. I used my left arm to fully open it. And at that time, that's whenever I'm drawing my service weapon out. All at the same time? Yes, sir. Okay. He started coming towards me. Okay. Uh, how fast was he coming towards you? A fast paced walk. Wasn't running? Wasn't running. Did you hear anything as he was walking towards you? 
he, there was a loud yell. He was yelling, hey, 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 in an aggressive voice. And you had your gun point? Yes, sir. And the figure was moving around as you described? Yes, I have, I have my gun pointed, and I'm saying, let me see your hands, let me see your hands. What were you focused on? Him. Just him? Yes. And then he began coming towards you? Yes. And as he came coming for you, that's when you heard him speak? Yes. Okay. I'm going to do that now, all right? Yes, sir. Hey! 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 And that's at that point whenever I shot him. Somewhere in this area? Yes, sir. When you shot, what happened? He fell down. Okay. Go ahead and take a seat. They are holding Amber Geiger to an impossible standard. They're holding her and twisting and turning and making things that are innocent mistakes into evil acts. How do you feel what you did, Mr. John? I feel like a terrible person. I feel like a piece of crap. I hate it. I hate it every, I hate that I have to live with this every single day of my life. And I ask God for forgiveness, and I hate myself every single day. I feel like I don't deserve the chance to be with my family and friends. I wish he was the one with the gun that killed me. I never wanted to take an innocent person's life. And I am so sorry. This is not about hate. It's about being scared that night. Can you imagine Mr. Jean's perspective, an intruder barging into his apartment, somebody on the other side of that door being you, going in with the purpose of finding the threat and taking care of it, and then having been shot and fallen and being alone in that apartment? Can't you imagine that? being a little bit scarier than you just being alone at the moment. Yes, sir, I can. See, Ms. Geiger, you, you are very concerned about how you feel, right? No. When you shot at Mr. Jean, you knew you were using deadly force against him. Yes. You know what a bullet can do, don't you? Yes, I do. And when you shot at him twice, you intended to kill him. Y yes, sir. All right. So all this stuff about it being a a sad mistake, at the moment in time when rubber meets the road, when you pulled that trigger, you intended to kill Mr. John. He was the threat, yes sir. Will you answer my question? When you aimed and pulled the trigger at Mr. John, shooting him in center mass exactly where you are trained, you intended to kill Mr. John. I did. Ms. Geiger and your team, would you please stand? We, the jury, unanimously find the defendant, Amber Geiger, guilty of murder as charged in the indictment. No outburst. And it is signed by the presiding juror, who is juror number 11. My life has not been the same. It's just been like a roller coaster. I cannot sleep. I cannot eat. I'll never see him again. And I want to see him. I still want to see him. I have to try to keep the family together because everybody's in pain. I've never experienced a, a close death so in my family. It's hard not hearing his voice. Yeah, I make it my duty to call my mom or text her at least, you know, every day, a few times a day. Um, because I know that was always a concern for her with both of them to always have contact. So. Again, even though I'm low, I would still make it my duty to reach out to her, just so that she knows that I'm okay. And how has this affected your younger brother, Brian?
explain how she's reacted since the situation of knowing that she's killed an innocent man. She was very upset. I, I couldn't understand her when she first told me. I couldn't understand her because she was crying so hard. She wanted to take his place. She always would tell me she wish she, she could have taken his place. She feels very bad about it. She feels very bad about it. She's not, doesn't have that same light or energy that she had before. Yes, she's just expressed to me how she feels bad spending time with her family because he can't be with his. The jury having reached a verdict, I will now uh, announce it. We, the jury, find unanimously that the defendant did not cause the death of Botham John while under the immediate influence of sudden passion arising from an adequate cause and assess the defendant's punishment at 10 years imprisonment in the Texas Department of Criminal Justice.